Hey guys, welcome to my suburban oasis. So I don't know about you, but I'm kind of freaking out. Like this weather is amazing, but it's also so out of context for February. It's gonna be like 48 today. It's gonna be like in the 50s tomorrow and a couple more days. And I just, I don't know what to think about that. And on the one hand, I'm really happy because it's sunny and I'm gonna be able to come out here and do a little bit of gardening and get a, you know, jump on some of the things spring related. But on the other hand, it's kind of scary to have these temperatures happening, you know, um, when, it's not supposed to. <laughs> Anyhow, my name is Soleil and I garden his own 5B in mid Michigan. And today uh, we're going to be using some bricks to create a small uh, sort of raised bed, not really totally raised, but just kind of an opportunity to set aside some space for me to grow some additional vegetables. So let's take a look at the space. So this is a fairly flat area. It gets plenty of sunshine. We are on the west side of the house and um, I am looking at doing a brick semi-raised bed right here. And I was gonna go for either like a two by four or a two by eight. It really depends on how many bricks I have and how big I can make it. But two by four and two by eight is kind of a standard size for raised beds. So I figure I can get a cover for those pretty easily to be able to help keep it as sort of a low tunnel or cold frame, also to have like a screen over it. And this will just help to prevent because we do have a lot of deer pressure and rabbit pressure here. And uh, because it's in, in my front yard, we literally get deer that come along our street and they just walk right down it like they own it and uh, come right into the front yard and are not afraid of being up against the house or anything like that. So while this is kind of tucked in between two houses, it's not gonna stop a hungry deer or a rabbit from eating things. Also, we have groundhogs and opossums and raccoons and any type of <laughs> wild animal you can think of that comes through here. So it would be nice to be able to protect it. And I think this is a great area for it. It's also pretty flat. So um, this is not going to be a perfect raised bed because I didn't prep it ahead of time in the fall. I didn't have time. and. Um, because of my knee injury, you know, really didn't get started on it. But we're going to do it today, and it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to, I think, provide an opportunity to be practical and will also be pretty and liven up this space between the two homes. So we're going to use this dolly because it has been incredibly helpful for us to use to lift heavy things, and I'm just going to stack some bricks on it, and we'll see how many we can get on there and start moving them to the site. These are just some old patio bricks that we got from a friend who had taken their patio apart and redone it with some new bricks. So they're super heavy duty and quite weather resistant. I'm going to test the load here.
Now I'm gonna pause now that I have this first set of bricks in because I wanna measure it and see how wide it is. Okay, so this is a nice kind of T-square that I can line up here and see just how square I am going, which is not great so far. All right, and then we're gonna measure the innards and the inside is 20 inches. So I think if I put these on the outside, that will make it 24, but let me see what that looks like. Okay, that actually makes it I must not have been measuring correctly. Let's try this again. This is 28, so that's actually perfect because I could get one of those two by four covers in. And then this is four feet. And that is perfect. So then I'll just put another brick on the end of that. Excellent. And then we'll square up this end. Now what I want to do is have this be in line with the bird bath, which I think it is. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to now um, do a second level. As I do the second level, I'm going to make sure basically that I'm taking bricks and I'm going to overlap any place where the cracks are and that just kind of will help make it stronger. So hopefully you can see what I mean. And I'll give you a close up here. So basically you can see that the cracks in between the bricks are just going to be offset. So we have a crack right in the middle of this brick and a crack in the middle of this brick and so on and so forth. And that just makes it a stronger wall. It kind of fits together better and helps hold it together better. Again, this isn't anything fancy because I'm not using any concrete or anything to help hold it together. Just something to be able to plant in. Now, I'm also a person who really likes to do some of these things on the fly. So if I find that I have so many bricks left over, I might actually end up then trying to see if I can make this eight feet long because it really won't take that many more bricks. But again, um, I, I would have to extend it further. So let's see what we got. I had to change to my garden cart because the dolly tire keeps deflating. It's super frustrating to have to keep pumping it up. So rather than trying to keep doing that, move to the garden cart.
So I think this is turning out pretty good. It is really just dry stacked brick. Um, and I'm going to now take and put some cardboard in the middle and then I'm going to fill it with compost. We'll see how much we get of that done today. I was going to do cardboard, but I have so much of this raw material. And this is deep enough that I think I don't have to really worry about any of the weeds coming up. All right, well, some of the compost is frozen, so I could only get a bit, but we'll use what we've got. Put a layer on just to get it started. I was going to use some of my uh, pots that I needed to empty, but those are totally frozen. Tomorrow um, is supposed to be warm again and the day after, so maybe those will unfreeze enough that I can uh, put them in there. <laughs> There's a kale right there. It is not done, obviously. We have a ways to go. So here's what we have. It's about one brick full. So I think I actually might buy raised bed soil mix or something like that in order to go with my compost and just put the compost on top. I'm not sure, we'll see. Um, the bricks will help to absorb some of the heat and will help this to warm up earlier in the springtime. And if I have a cover over it, it will allow me to get some of my seedlings out sooner. And I can do that in my other garden as well, but there's only so much space in that. And I do have to get a couple of things out of there. Like I've been growing a clematis in there. Like I said, flowers end up taking over my garden bed for whatever reason in my veggie garden. But I wanna make sure my potager is a potager, so I'll be moving that clematis as well this year. But you can see I've got it pretty well squared up. And yes, uh, something could knock this over, but once we get it full of soil, it will be even more sturdy. So I tried to put the top bricks in just slightly from the bottom bricks, and that way it will help to stay upright against some of the pressure that might occur from putting the soil into the inside of the bricks. And there's also a little bit of space in between some of the bricks, which will help it to drain as well. So yeah, all in all, a job that I enjoy doing, uh, despite the flat tire on my uh, pulley. But otherwise, it was pretty fun, and uh, we'll keep going on it. So I'll show you updates as we finish. Thanks so much for joining me again today, and I hope you're getting out in your garden. See you next time. Bye!